Okay. Okay, anyone has answers? Can it? Michael? Andrew? And uh, I think uh, Crystal? No clue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a problem we call it algebra problem. Okay, no clue. Okay, the infinite many variables. This would be understand to be uh, a, a kind of limited concept. Okay, so uh, so let's see. Okay, oh Lucia, okay, you're here. So here's look at this equation. Okay, here's a trick. Suppose you have this right now. For <laughs> if you have infinite many radicals. This part will be uh, the same. Look at this part. Do you think it has the same as this one? No difference? I think there is no difference. Okay, those two should be the same. Okay, because the infinite minus uh, radical that. So, what that tells you, okay. So this part actually is five, okay? So it's square x plus five should be equal to, it should be equal to five, okay? Okay, so the answer is, uh, the answer will be when you square it, it's gonna be x plus five equals 25. So x is actually 20. Yeah, x is 20. Um, how did you get x plus square root x plus five equals five? Oh, I just said because there are infinite many radicals there. So, so this part, suppose x satisfies the above equation, then uh, then you have infinite radicals there. So now I'm going to express the above equation, and I circle this part. This part, how many radicals there are? Infinite many. So according to above equation, this part should be equal to five. So I replace this by five. So that's why this equation now is simplified to x plus five equals five. Just to repress this, repress, yeah, repress this part by by five. Okay, the reason it's five because I used this. This identity. And you say, well, there is one more radical there. No, because the infinite mean radicals, one more is no different. Okay, so that's why the equation now is simplified to, to this one. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the limit concept here. So, so, uh, so this is a, uh, now from here, this equation x equals 20, it's easy, right? And another problem is if I ask you, uh, uh, what is the value of this one? 20 plus 20 plus 20, <laughs> and the infinite many radicals. Okay. Radicals, so red. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Then, uh, then you uh, you know you already know the answers right away. Okay. So then this must be five, because, right? Because our our equation about say x, right? Yeah, technically, so the answer is the right answer. 
But if I if you are given this problem, how do you solve it without knowing the above problem, right? Uh, first of all, we should know it has a value. How do I know it has a value? There actually there is an upper bound. Okay, so assuming you can have a value, so so what you do is that you let Q to be to be this, right? Okay, you have an infinite radical. So you know what is the value of Q? But then you look at this part. Okay, then you look at this part. You will see that. This part is also Q. Right? That part is also Q. Okay? Uh, because when you when you cop when you when you look at that, you don't see any difference between this one and that one. Right? No difference. So you can replace by Q. So now you square. And you have to solve this quadratic equation. Right. So Q square minus Q minus 20 equals zero. And I think Q is Q is five and plus four zero, right? So Q equals five, so equals negative four. And X cannot be negative four. So the answer is Q is five. It cannot be negative four. Okay. That's good. All right now, my question is: uh, my question is, can we simplify it? Okay, uh, for for x squared and zero, can we simplify? Uh, there are many questions now. X plus x. Right. And there was the infinity a radical. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about limit. infinite. Okay. And there's a movie I told you, there's a movie called uh, A Man Who Knows Infinity. Okay. So he can get lots of uh, interesting identity. Okay. It's a famous uh, mathematician. Ramaranja in India. All right. So how do I simplify? Let's use the same idea. Here above one is 20. You know, I just replaced by x. So I left q to be x plus x plus x plus. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and uh, then you see that this part is also Q, so okay, it's the same, right? Right. So repeat, you know, for general X, not necessarily twenty. Say squared, okay, then you will get X squared minus Q minus X zero. Question is, how can I find a Q? Well, how can I find a Q? You solve. Use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus b squared minus four ac. So the answer will be one plus minus square one plus four x divided by two. Uh, the question is, uh, there are two possible solutions. Q one is a is a positive. Q two is negative. This is negative, this is positive. I think the negative can, I mean, IQ must be positive. So the answer is, yeah, answer is the Q is going to be this. Okay, so in other words, in other words, this infinite many, uh, this expression was infinite radical. Is going to be can be expressed in this form. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, this involves a concept of limit, actually. How do you, yeah, how do you know, you know, how do you understand the expression was infinite many circle, infinite many radical? Actually, you take a kind of like a limit concept here. Anyway, they're equal, right? Now, that's the, there are similar problems there. Uh, for example, 0 0.9 bar, right? 0 0.9 bar can be viewed as 0 0.999, right? Right, infinite many, many nines, okay? Right? I'm going to show to you, this is actually is going to be one. <laughs> yeah. This is a, uh, this is actually going to be one. Okay. Yeah, how do you get this? How do you get it? Well, there, 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 there are a couple ways to do, right? So let x to be 0 0.999, right? So that is going to be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.0999. Uh, I can also, About 10, right? Do you agree with me? Yes. Right? <laughs> so 0 0.999, right? Divide by 10, you know, just move a, yeah, you get a one zero after the decimal point. So it's going to be 0 0.9 plus, and that's the one, it's the unknown number, which is x, right? So now you have x equals 0 0.9 plus x equals 10. Okay, so let's find out the x. What is x? Right. The x is going to be, yeah, my microphone uh, sounds a little weird, right? That's true. I use only one single uh, computer. So I'm going to switch it later, okay? The second. Yeah, I'm going to switch it. Just a second. Now it's better, right? Good. So you see from here, x must be equal to one, clearly, right? So x equals 9 over 10 plus x equals 10. Then you move this to the left hand side. So x minus x over 10 equals 9 over 10, and x is going to be 1. So it's 9 over 10, x equals x equals 1. Okay, so, so in other words, 0 0.999, uh, infinite min 9 is going to be 1. So that's a, a real, right? it's about the same style of problems here, right? Right? Now, Let's uh, let's understand this problem in a slightly different way. Yeah, today my topic I'm going to call the infinity problems on the infinity. Okay, you have infinite many uh, terms. Okay. All right. First of all, we need as the following fact: if the number r and pursuit value is less than one, then R to the n's power, this approaches, approaches zero as n approaches infinity, okay? Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. For example, one over 10, right? This is a number. Uh, one is going to be 0 0.1. One over 10 squared 
0 0.01, right? 1 over 10 cubed, 0 0.001. So this number is getting smaller and smaller. 1 over, uh, let's, let's put how many zeros here, okay? And uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 zeros, okay? Then it's going to be 0 point, right? Wow, the thousand. I cannot even write it. Just, just, just too small. Okay, let me change it. I just put the eight here instead of this bigger number. Okay, if I put eight here, it's already a very small number. Zero, 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 right? Zero, zero. Okay, you have eight digits. Okay. So this is a very small number. So it's getting smaller and smaller. So that's explained to you uh, what does it mean, you know, converging, uh, approaching zero. All right. Okay. And then, uh, then let's consider, yeah, let's look at, look at this. Look at this, uh, how many terms, n terms. Okay. Can we group them together? The answer is yes. Okay. So I can let, yeah, this is also infinite terms, right? So that, uh, yeah. So when we, uh, when we, uh, add, you know, in this sum, we have infinite terms of when, we, yeah, this is a, uh, first of all, let's combine them, okay? So I'm going to let S to be one plus R, R square, R cubed, R to the N, okay? I multiply S by R, so I get R, R times R is R square, R square times R is R cubed, R cubed times R is R to the fourth power, and R to the N plus one. Okay. So now that's equation one, equation two. Let's take the difference. All right. If we equation two minus equation one, what do you got? Or equation one minus equation two. Let's try this here, yeah, opposite. So this part and this part is gone. What is left is S minus RS. And here's one other, right? So, and you take S out, and finally, you have both side by R. So, so, in other words, I got this identity, okay, for, for, So now we let, let n goes to infinity. So what does that mean? You have infinity many terms. Okay, so this left hand, left hand side, you just have infinity terms, right? So you keep writing like that, you have infinity many terms. Similar to the above, like infinity many radicals. Okay, so you have to really make a precise definition what does that mean, right? So here you have infinity terms, add them together. And the right hand side, this approach is zero, right? If uh, this is very less than that one, okay? So that approach is zero, so you get the identity. Okay, this is my identity, okay? It's very important, okay, identity. Okay. This is called the uh, uh, geometric series. Okay, that holds when i is more than one, absolutely, yeah. All right, so yeah, this is an interesting idea, right? Okay, so I'm going to apply this to the following problem. Yeah, 0 0.9 again, <laughs> 0 0.9 bar. 
is going to be 0 0.9, 9, 9, 9, 9, right? Now, this can be viewed as 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.009 plus 0 0.0009 and keep it going, right? Okay, so every term has a factor here, 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 times 1 over 10, plus 0 0.9 times 1 over 10 squared, right? And plus 0 0.9 times 1 over 10 cubed, and keep it going. All right, so uh, let's take the 0 0.9 out. So what you get here is 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 square and plus 1 over 10 cubed and keep it going, right? So what is inside? So the inside we already know uh, about formula, right? I is going to be 1 over 10. So based on the above identity, what is inside is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over I. Okay, so let's simplify it. The denominator is going to be 1 minus 0 0.1, so 0 0.9. So answer is 1. That's the same result that we got, you see? All right, now we, we're going to apply, yeah, here we already learned some, uh, you know, limit concept here, okay, this, you know, infinite many terms means, uh, you know, you have to think about the limit, okay, uh, uh, so now uh, I'm going to look at an, why it's called geometric series, okay, why this is called geometric series, because it's from geometry, I guess, so if, if we add the infinite main terms, then uh, this is true when i is less than one. Now, if we only have a finite many terms, okay, and this is supposed to be less than this, right? If i is positive. So, okay, of course this is less than one over minus r. So here, uh, uh, here if i is positive, okay? If i is positive. I'm talking about positive, okay? So this partial sum is less than one over one minus r. Then it's getting close, close to one over one minus r when n is getting large, large, large. Okay, if n is one billion, it's almost equal to one over, okay? One trillion, okay? So that's called, yeah. So this approaches, okay? It, it approaches that number as n approaches infinity, okay? So that's why you have this identity. This identity should be understood in the following way. You have finite many terms, and it's smaller than the one over minus r, but it's getting close, close to that when n is getting larger. The gap is so, it's getting smaller and smaller. So the limit case is here, limit case, okay? Limit is just equal to one over one minus r. So that's why you can write this identity. All right. So now let's take a look at the square. Okay, right. this is a unit square. Okay, so unit square, and you divide it equally into four unit square. Okay, I'm going to call it. Okay. Then I divide this one into four equal squares. And then I cut it again. Okay, so it's smaller, right? Then I divide this into this procedure repeated infinitely many times. But the square is getting smaller, right? Smaller, smaller. 
So that's a picture. So you get a sequence of squares on the diagonal and they're getting smaller, smaller, smaller. How many square that? Infinite many, infinite many squares. Okay, infinite many squares. And uh, yeah, infinite many squares. Now, My question is, what is the sum? What is the total area of the shadow region? Okay, clearly this area should be less than one because this is unit square, right? Because they're containing in the square, but how big it is definitely is greater than this quarter of that, right? Because this this square is already one square is already equal to quarter. You think about that, okay? How do you figure out? All right, and let's find out, you know, you can guess, you know, how big it is. is. Definitely it's bigger than a quarter, right? It's between that. I don't know what is that, right? So we have to add, the, so that's called A1, that's called A2, that's called A3, and the sequence. Of, so total area is A1 plus A2 plus A3, and A4, A5, and getting smaller, 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 and infinite minimum. So let's figure out what is those. Okay. Right. All right, uh, so can you find the, the formula for the ice area of the ice square? And then the first one I know it's going to be half of square, right? No problem. The second one is going to be half of a half because the edge is going to be two square square, right? The third one is one of eighth. Okay, it's a square because it's zero. So the in general, an is going to be one over two to the n's power square. Great. So I can uh, mod, I can change it to this two to the two n. I can change it to the two square n's power. I can change it to one quarter to the n's power. That's much better to see. Okay, so. Then area is going to be A1 plus A2, A3, A4, and keep it going, AN, the general nth term. So now I have a, a what is it? Yeah, here's a one quarter. That's one quarter square, one quarter cube, one quarter to the fourth power, and here's one quarter to the nth power, and keep it going. Now, are you able to give me the sum of this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, for infinite many terms here, right? Now, there's a one is missing here. So you can add the one plus one. You can also, you can take a quarter out. And then the first term will be one because you want to apply the formula, right? If you factor one quarter out, and then you get this. 
Now, what is that? We already know that this is going to be one over one minus r, right? And simplified. Three over four and up to get, it's one third. Oh my God, that's one third. So the total area of the shared region is going to be one third. We prove it. We did not know that before we finished the computation. But but only the sum of finite many squares is smaller than one third, but getting close, close to one third. Okay, it's getting close, close to one third. Okay, so this, the area of this shared region, okay, is getting close, close to, uh, yeah, depending on how many squares you count. If you count the first one trillion squares here, and then Okay, they're getting so small, so small. Then the answer will be almost equal to one third, but slightly less than one third. The limit is one third. Okay, so that's a concept of limit. We were talking about limit in daily life, right? Like, oh, how fast a human being can, can run, right? There is a limit, right? So that's a concept of limit, right? You know, how many, you know, yeah, how long you can learn, you know? How many days you can survive without food? That's a limit. That is up to limit. She cannot cannot be infinite, right? So we we have a concept limit in daily life. Okay. Okay. So so let's go back to the meaning of this. Okay. The meaning of this. Okay, infinite many, infinite many radicals. Okay, this really mean, you know, how do you define infinite many radicals? This actually is defined to be the limit of finite many radicals. Right, so this will be the last one is 20, so n radicals. Okay, so when n is getting larger, larger, but this number is not going to get larger, larger. This number is always uh, uh, small. Okay, so this number is not getting larger. This number actually is always less than five and getting close, close to five. Okay, so limit the case is going to be five. So that's why the above, the above identity is going to be five. Okay, since the limit is five, so we may say this expression is equal to five. Okay, yeah. So, so this was infinite. This is a five means, okay, means the limit is equal to five, okay? Yeah, the limit equals to five. Okay, now let's see why this is always less than equal to five. Can you see that? Okay, question. Okay. Why is is this one less than always less than five? Can you prove that? If we have a, uh, this is the n radicals, right? You know, this reminds me of some special toy uh, craft, something made in Russia. You know, like a bottle. Have you seen that? It's a bottom uh, and like a something like that. When you open it, there's another one inside and open, there's another one in front. There's a, just, a, of course, I cannot make it one infinite. Mean, there's usually 10 layers, you know, then uh, finally it's so tiny so that I can stop making, okay? And you can open one by one, right? So it's a <laughs> similar style here. This is the idea, you know. I saw it. I saw it some uh, something like that from Russia. Okay, they just open 
open it then, and have another similar one inside, then open it, have another, maybe you have this one, oh, okay. Oh yeah, it's called the Russian nesting toy, toy. okay? That's right. So that is a, that is the idea come, you know, similar to here, okay? So why this is a lesson five? Okay, let me look at this. Why 20 is less than five? That's clear. This is a uh, 25, which is five, right? Clear. So, and this is a lesson. This is a mathematics, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of a one radical. So it's 20 plus five, because the square of 20 is less than five. Then you can 25, 25 is a five. So once you open one radical, you, you automatically uh, uh, get the integer, okay? For example, even you have, even you have this, as long as you repress this by five, then the rest of them will be all radicals immediately gone, okay? All radicals immediately gone, why? Okay, so this is a lesson, 20 plus 20. I'm going to repress square root 20 by five. Once that is repressed by five, then it kills all the radicals. That's magic, right? <laughs> yeah, so this part is 25. So it's going to be 20 plus five, then it's five, you see? I got it. That's interesting, mathematics is very interesting, right? Okay, so now, suppose you have a, you have a 20 radical. 20, right, radicals, okay? Why it's less than five? All you have to do is just make sure you repress this by a larger number, less than five, okay? Just repress it by five. Repress by five. Right now you only have a, a, a n minus one radicals, right? Yeah. So here's 20, but then 20 plus five becomes five, square root of you know, square five, then five, 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 they're all equal to five. So it's automatically, all the radicals will be one by one, shh, they're all gone. <laughs> all right, so that's an interesting problem. Okay. Yeah, so that just represents a limit. Okay, it's a pound, okay. All right, so now I'm going to ask you, what is the value of the following? Okay, right. so you have an infinite many. Infinite many, uh, that's a fret, yeah. Infinite many is this side. Okay. Now, if we have only finite many, you can do that, right? Suppose, right? That's easy, right? And you simplify it and you get an answer. Okay. So it will be one plus one and a half half, right? Then you combine them, and that will be two over three, right? Yeah. That will be three over five. Then add them together with five over eight. Okay. So uh, yeah, five over eight. Okay. So no, not five. Over eight. I'm missing one here. Yeah, to be like. Then I have a. 13 of 8. Okay. But if you have infinite many terms, how can you see that? Infinite many. Okay. So if you have infinite many means, uh, means you take the limit. Okay. This will be the limit of a finite many. Okay. This is a, yeah, if you have infinite many. This is gonna be the limit of, of this. 
Okay, you have a finite many. Okay, so the last term in a finite many, okay, limit of n. So you have n, n lines here. So the finally, uh, at the end, it's just last one is two here, right? Okay, one plus one, so it's one plus one. All right, so the limit exists, and the question is how do you find it? How do you find it? Okay, this time it approaches a, a yeah, it approaches a number. Uh, yeah, how do you do that? You let x to be one plus, okay? Then you realize that this part is also x. So you repress it. Okay. Now, can you solve for x? X is positive, greater than one. Okay, show me answer, okay? If you get a question like that. Okay, anyone can solve this equation? Okay, Michael, who? Well, Michael team here also. Yeah, thank you, okay. This is not a linear equation, but this is the equation involved x only, right? Can find it. X equals one, I don't think you know, if X equals one, it's one equals one plus one. That's impossible. Thank you. So you multiply both sides by X. You get X squared, here's an X, here's a one, right? So you get a quadratic question. Okay, and then you solve for X, use a quadratic formula. Come on, quadratic formula. And B squared minus four AC. So what I get here is one plus minus square five over two. I think the one number is positive, other number is negative. So negative number we don't want it because we know X is positive. So answer is X equals one plus square root of five over two. So that means one plus, Okay, it's going to be equal to that number. It's interesting, right? Okay, it is interesting. All right, so uh, this is about, uh, hold on, yeah. This is about uh, infinity, okay, okay. So I'm going to show you uh, a movie. Right, uh, I'm not sure I can play it here. Hold on. OK. 
just click on the head. Oh, that was my one. Yeah, this is a movie uh, I'm going to show you at the very beginning, just a few pages, okay? Ah, hold on. This is just a beginning of the movie. This is about. Uh, he was, in a way, my discovery. I did not invent him. Like other great men, he invented himself. The difficulty for me. It's then, a, he's a really genius. He, he, can, about him. he knows a lot of. And she too much. show you know you have an infinite many radicals as a side you get a number please you hold yourself in good esteem okay so your life is much better than this i hope someday some of you can you can you can you can you make them bigger progress in mathematics or other science so uh if you have a chance, okay, spend time, watch the whole movie. The title is called The Man Who Knows the Infinity. It's the movie made in 2015. It's nice music. Oh. 
your accounts had better be half as polished as your ego. <laughs> Okay, I have to stop here to play with that, okay? Because uh, on your side, you don't want, you cannot see the more pictures mostly. But you know the height. It's a home. You get on internet, uh, okay, go to YouTube, use type search, the man who knows the infinity. Okay, then you, then you watch it, okay? So let me stop here.